Oh god, here we go. A painful part about episode 7 for me. <clears throat> Let's go. I got an interview on Friday. I don't like it when I get like last minute calls, which is what I don't like about interview stuff. I feel like those things should be way more considerate about the people's, about anyone's time when it comes to livelihood so yeah sorry I just went on to a random bit of a tangent over there but if when I don't feel prepared and then I feel pressured I can't do anything so I feel like paralyzed so let's continue so, yeah let's get into the rhythm I see so this emotion that feels like sweet suffocation is love It is emotion I do not know, one I do not have, though my magic can grant any wish, though my paradise can grant any wish, the thing I cannot have, that incomprehensible emotion, that burns like fire, and yet madly one wants to hold it close. All I know is that no matter how great a witch I might become, I cannot create this emotion, it must be given by another person. For the first time, I realized that I wasn't all-powerful. I knew that Shan had discovered in the world of humans. This emotion. It's just too much. Once you've felt it, there's no forgetting it, is there? Shannon, you win. Love is it. It may be the most important element, and the one that I lack. Shannon, I'll watch and see how your love develops. So please, teach me more and more about this new emotion. Well, I wasn't aware that I didn't finish the chapter. I feel like an idiot. I was probably so overwhelmed with the fact that you know Balor doesn't keep his promise! That I was in too much pain to continue, and yeah. This form is. I'm lending it to you. After all, I hate idiots. <laughs> Call yourself Claire as a temporary name. Or would you prefer Banto? You have my gratitude. This way I won't have to expose my pitiful form. Burncastle had given Claire a fake form. It was a temporary form for the person acting the part of Beatrice. A fake to fool those who still hadn't discovered Beatrice's true form. Then... Is this a tale about me in another world? Liam, this is indeed a tale of you in another world, and also my tale. The tale of a world where I live as a witch, not a human. I am capable of imagining what of scenarios for my own life. However, the tale you tell is beyond anything I can imagine. Even so, it's the life another you has led. But still... That doesn't mean I can accept it easily! Liam suddenly yelled and looked at the floor. Liam already knew. Because of the fragments left by Brincastle, Leon knew. There was a different world where Leon lived as the Golden Witch Beatrice, and in this world eventually, on the day of the 1986 October Family Conference, she would be the ringleader of a terrible crime. Even if it's a different world, you're saying that I get my entire family and all the servants involved in a terrible crime that I'm the mastermind of. How am I supposed to deal with that? Be quiet. Listen. And figure it out. In a different life, I end up as a servant. If that wasn't enough, I suddenly become a witch. 
and then I eventually carry out several terrifying murders. How am I supposed to understand that? Yeah, I see where you're coming from. I doubt anyone could understand. This person here thought that no one would ever understand. That's why you're here. That's why Burn Castle brought you two, two people who should have never met together like this. It's not like I had any deep reason for it. It was just a whim. This is a motive that no one else can understand, Leon. So you need to be the one to understand it. I'm not the main character in this tale. You are. I'm just here to help you understand. You said that you understand the culprit's motive. Yes. Is that motive a satisfying explanation for why I'd kill my entire family? Who knows? That's for you to decide. Even if I say it's satisfying, that doesn't mean it'll satisfy you. You have to decide that for yourself. I really don't have a clue what's going on. I've seen several crimes called game boards that Banatrice supposedly carried out. And now I'm hearing another me talk about a different life from mine. But there's no connection between that and the crime. I don't understand! At that, at this point in the tale, even I could not have dreamed that I would eventually carry out such terrible crimes. In fact, even if I had been able to dream of it, I did not have the power to commit those crimes at the time. Probably. Your misfortune probably came when you solved the Eptaf's riddle. Huh? You mean that Eptaf but the hidden gold which Grandfather supposedly wrote? There exists a system for gaining different accomplices for each crime. Reasoning can lead us to the possibility that the culprit possessed a vast amount of money. We can also envision another system. Which involves inviting all to the Golden Land. And making all loves bear fruit. So, it wasn't just the motive. You've already seen it that far as well. That's the answer to the final riddle from the fourth game. Your greatest misfortune was solving the epitaph. Reviving as the Golden Witch in the true sense and gaining magical power. Looking back, was that really a misfortune after all? I do not know. However, as long as the fact that Valor returns in 1986 remains unchanged, some sort of tragedy would certainly have occurred. That's right. If Balor had returned a year earlier or later, that incident might not have occurred. No, some small incident probably would have occurred. It would have surely been a mysterious and possible incident, which no one could have explained. But even so, compared to the Rokinjima serial murders, it would have been a tiny thing. If Balor had returned a year earlier or later, then what? Fate can be so filled with irony. It made me walk the path of a witch. And when I saw the epitaph, I became a true witch. Then six years passed and I learned of his return. If all that was fate, then this crime must have been inevitable and inescapable for me. In 1980, Balor was resentful because of the death of his mother, Asumu, and his father's remarriage that came too soon, so he left the Ushiromiya family. For six whole years, he had no direct contact with them. He convinced his grandparents on his mother's side to help him and went by his mother's maiden name. Then, when those grandparents passed away, he finally made up with Rudolph and returned to the Ushiromiya family again in 1986. That bad luck gave birth to your motive for the crime. I did wonder, why after six whole years did he finally come back? I understand. In a way, it would have been better for you if he had never come back. Of course, my suffering would have continued. However, I may not have tainted myself with the unforgivable crime of mass murder. How could Balor leaving create a motive? You've got it backwards. Backwards? The crime didn't occur because Balor left. It happened because Balor came back. The more I think about it, Ushiromiya Bandler was quite a disagreeable man, more than anything else because he never realized the outbreak of the crime was his fault. He did remember in the end, 
However, that was long after you gave up and disappeared. If that is so, then it would give my heart some peace. I don't have a clue what you two are talking about anymore, but I'd like to ask you bluntly. I want to know. What on earth happened to you that made you decide to commit a crime? Yes, that's the most important part. It's just like how Ushiro Mia Ballad respected the Y Dennett in mystery novels. That's where the answer to all the riddles are hidden, both in the tale of the Golden Witch and in the game. In that case, allow me to continue. 1980. Six years before I resolved myself to committing the crime. Chapter 6. Days of Trials. Nineteen eighty. Six years until the incident. Battler has left the Ushiramiya family? That's what Krauss and Rudolph were saying. What a shock! intention of criticizing your way of life or your family situation. However, a father is in a towering rage. Disinheriting a son is one thing, but I've never even heard of a child becoming fed up and leaving the family on his own. That Balor can be surprisingly stubborn, so I like someone else I know. If you are unable to understand Balor's feelings, one might question your right to be a father. Enough, Natsuhi. I'm sure Rudolph was just trying to show how dedicated he was to raising Kiri's child in his own way. I would have nothing to say if this were happening next year, but why this year? He's still in his period of mourning. If you consider the timing of this pregnancy, one must acknowledge that Rudolph has acted disgracefully. Come on, don't be so harsh. This is my way of atoning for what I've done. Bal is trying to protest against you on behalf of his departed mother, Asuna. I deeply understand how he feels. If he were here, I would want to hold him and cry along with him. Nazi's words were sharp. They pierced Rudolph mercilessly. That's my girl. That's my girl right there. Sorry, I, I have to displace the pain that will come for me as I read. Rudolph had no retort. His relationship with Kyrie had been adulterous, plain and simple. According to Rudolph, he had been close to Kyrie longer than Asumu, and even after his marriage to Asumu, that relationship had not disappeared. What the hell does that mean?! You old bastard! So you just been betraying Mom from the start! Sure, I know Kyrie! You've told me that she was your business partner, and a friend was advice you could always rely on! If you're trying to say that after all this time that she was more than that, then why should I give a damn?! After Mom's death, you could have done whatever you wanted. I'm right there with you, saying that you should live life as you please. But just when did Kiria get pregnant? Back when Mom was still alive, right? Yeah, now I finally see. So this is why you always make me want to vomit. Are you glad that Mom's finally dead now? You are, aren't you? I'm sure it would have been so hard on you keeping your infidelity and even a kid's secret when Mom was still alive. But now that Mom conveniently kicked it, you get to marry Kiria, and I get a new little brother or sister. You can bet that mom's crying in heaven! You bastard! You're embarrassing! I'm embarrassed! I'm so embarrassed I can't stand to have the same last name as you! The kid is completely guiltless. It'd be too sad if he or she doesn't have both parents together. Go ahead and build a new family and raise that kid and have a happy life! But I'll never forgive you! Mom isn't here to hate you anymore, so I'll hate you in her place! With all my body and soul! So long, old bastard! That is enough, Natsuhi. Rudolph hasn't lost the affection he feels for Battler. It may take some time, but he wants to fix their relationship one day. As any father should. If it were some complete stranger, that would be one thing. But this is your own flesh and blood, son. It's clearly your responsibility. Go ahead, despise me all you want. I won't argue. That's the only way I can atone. At the very least, make sure you give that ch new child a happy life. The kid who's going to be born in Balor. They're both my kids. 
running Kiri after Asumu's death may have been painful for battle, but it was the best choice you could have made for the coming child. I understand why you did it. And I understand why Balor felt like telling you that you were happy when Asumu is dead. Stop, Natsuhi. Rudolph has already been scolded enough by the person most fit to do so. Now then, how about some black tea? Could you go ask someone in the kitchen to make us some? Understood. Natsuhi took this as a signal to leave the room and did so. Once she left, Krauss relaxed slightly. I feel bad for Asumu, but if we consider the timing of that soon-to-be-born child, this might have been quite the coincidence. Almost as though Asumu knew that and stepped down from the stage of her own choosing. Did I kill Asumu? If so, how long has it been since I started killing her? If you still treasure Asumu's memory, no matter how many years it takes, you must fix your relationship with Balor. Yeah, I know. And be sure to pour just as much affection and Kiri in the new child that is to be born, while also bearing Asumu's cross. If they had reserved seating in L, hmm? If they do, I'd like to reserve myself a VIP spot. The news that Balor had abandoned the Ushirimiya name swept across the family. And poor Battler too. I do believe he'll make up with them eventually, but... This is a matter for the family. It is not something servants need to concern themselves with. Instead, we should focus on memorizing the face of the newest member of the Ushirimiya family, Kiri. Yes, that's true. She will be coming to the family conference this year. If the person who just joined the Ushiramiya family would be coming to the conference, then what about the person who just left the family? That means Balor isn't coming, right? That seems the most probable outcome. How lonely is the loss of a single noisy man? Though most people felt a bit lonely to see Balor leave the Ushiramiya family, they didn't think about it any more than that. However, what about Shannon? Wasn't Balor supposed to come on her for a, on a white horse? Oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that right. However, what about Shannon? Wasn't Balor supposed to come for her on a white horse? I was surprised at first. I thought that since he had left the family, he might not be coming to this island anymore. If we consider Balor's feelings, this is only natural, I guess. I understand painfully well why he wanted to leave his family. But does that really mean he won't come back to Rokinjima anymore? What on earth is going on? Will he never really return? Unable to ask him this directly, I was forced to live each day fretfully. Battler, I understand how you feel, but... To say that you'll never return because you abandoned your family... That's a lie, right? I was so confused that the world seemed to be spinning around me. I had a tight feeling in my chest and couldn't think about anything. When I happened to touch my cheek, I was surprised to find it hot and wet while wearing a truly miserable expression on my face. I was crying. Shannon. Shannon. From far away I could hear someone calling to me, but it was a very strange sort of distance. Though I felt very far away, the voice also seemed to be coming from right beside me. Shannon, I know your heart. It's okay, it's just a fight between a boy and his father, and I'm sure the rumors blow everything out of proportion. Everything's just being exaggerated. Indeed. There are none who can say with certainty that Balor will not return to this island. You would do well to remain strong. Where is this place? I seem to remember it somehow. I think it reminds me of the scenery from a strange dream I once had. Then this must be another dream. 
I was there, under an arbor surrounded by a golden rose garden, and two witches in white and red dresses were showering words of encouragement upon me. You can be sure that those rumor-mongering young servants are embellishing the story however they please. So he has changed his name, they say. Surely this can be nothing more than a family quarrel. Thank you. I wish I could believe that. Of course it's true. He's a boy, after all. You can hardly be surprised that he has a few arguments with his dad. Precisely as you say. Clearly they will make it up to each other once they cool their heads. When men argue, it's always fiery at first, but they burn out quickly. In contrast, an argument between women burns like a steady flame, but the fuel never goes dry. Men's arguments are fierce but short, quick and easy. You're right. I hope Balor and Rudolph make up soon. Oh, they will. Haven't you heard Balor mentioning it all the time? He always fights with his father. This is just another one of those fights. The death of his mother and his father's remarriage have merely upset him. It sounds as though he's gone to live with his mother's parents, but after he's cooled his head for a few days, he'll come back. It's like a kid running away from home, see? The two witches kept saying Balor's fight hadn't been anything huge. If it had been merely a family quarrel, the rumors wouldn't have started in the first place. Taking an optimistic view here isn't likely to prove useful. Either way, this is a problem between Balor and his father. If you're patient, time will heal all wounds. There is no point in you feeling bad over it. Just because Balor happened to be absent today doesn't mean we can be sure that he'll never come back. All this means is that Rudolph came alone today. True! Of course, he will be at the next family conference as energetic as ever. By then, Rudolph will probably bring that Kyrie here too. Balor may be sulky about it, but I'm certain that he will come as well. You're right. Yeah. I'm sure you're right. How nice would it be if they were right? In fact, if I could, I'd like to flip through the calendar until autumn right now and check to see whether he does come to the next conference. If he does, then all of my fears are groundless. It would mean the rumor-mongering family members and the servants have just blown things out of proportion. Like, keep in mind, so like, let's see, they're 13 years old. Okay. So, like... It's not like... So, okay. Just keep that in mind. That's probably how old she is at the moment. Because it's 1980. Okay, so... Yeah. If Balor was right here, I'd want to question him right away. Hey... It isn't true that you'll never come back to Rokinjima again, right? And then if he said that, of course he'd come back again. It would be such a relief. I don't know the phone number for Rudolph's house, but I could probably look it up if I tried. However, as a servant of the family, I have no excuse for making such a call. Anyway, I have no way of knowing the phone number for Balor's grandparents' house. I can't do anything except wait for Rudolph's family to come visit and hope for my fears are groundless. However, will I be able to make it through the day feeling like this? No way. I doubt I'll sleep a wink tonight. Just waiting around feeling like this when I don't know when my next chance will come. I can't do that. Will it be next month? Or the month after? In the worst case, I might have to wait until the family... In the will it be the next month or the month after? In the worst case, I might have to wait until the next family conference. And I have to wait that long. Holding back the suffocating feeling. I can't bear it. Hey, Shannon. Sorry to ask this out of the blue, but when you made up your mind to do something by next year, that something wasn't just quitting work as a servant on this island, right? Uh, that... I made the decision to start a new life. I didn't want to keep on being a servant by a force of habit. I made the decision to step into a new life and to leave my old life as a servant behind. And Balor promised that he'd come back here on the day of your decision, right? Um, yes. Tact is not one of my strong points, so I shall speak frankly. You made the decision to resolve yourself to starting a new life with Balor, correct? A new life with Battler. 
You are afraid that Balor will not come for you on the day of your decision. However, there is more to that day of decision than just Balor coming to see you. It's also the day for you to show that you're determined to spend the rest of your life with him. This determination is something that you must create for yourself. It won't bear fruit simply because Balor doesn't... Because Bal... I'm sorry. This determination is something you must create for yourself. It won't bear fruit simply because Balor shows up. Shannon, do you now have the determination to spend the rest of your life with him? You decided to put it off until the next family conference because you didn't have that determination last time, right? What does it mean to live life with Balor? Have you ever thought seriously about it in detail? Well, uh... As long as I'm working as a servant on Rokinjima, my opportunities for meeting him are limited. We're both underage, so it's too early to talk about... Um... Marriage. However, if I quit working as a servant, I should have many more opportunities to meet him. Once I quit work here, I'll return to the Fukuin house. I have my wages from the serving the family, so I should have more than enough to travel to Balor's house to play. And when I graduate from school, I can rent an apartment near Balor's house. And, well, I can work while going to school. That life would be a lot more difficult than I first thought. However, I'd be able to see Balor much, much more often. If not every day, then every week. I won't be a servant every more, so there won't be any difference in class. I can call him whenever I want. And I'm already doing both school and work. Thanks to my experience here, I know more than enough to do simple housework. Doesn't that sound like a fun life? You can rent a humble abode, and once you've built up your own home, you can invite Balor over. And then the next time you spend together, the world the two of you will make will begin. Doesn't that sound wonderful? It, yes, it does sound a bit wonderful. This is the first time I had ever imagined that future clearly. My love for him and my honest desire to live my life with him. Earlier, I was able to consider both of those deeply. However, now that I'm clearly imagining the future I plan to choose, I finally understand. I must be aware of how much determination will be needed to reach that future. You dream of marriage, eventually, don't you? Ho <laughs> ho! Girls these days dating with marriage in mind at such a young age. Well, well, that's a bit, um... Don't deny your dreams, okay? There's no point in taking a first step if your eyes are closed and you don't look to the future. If a girl's in love with a man, there's nothing wrong with thinking I want to marry him. That's a young girl's natural right. My face had turned bright red. Earlier, I thought that considering marriage really was a bit premature, so I tried as best as I could not to think about it. However, when the witches encouraged me to imagine it, that image was both exciting and vivid. I felt an indescribable feeling of refreshment and awakening. Like the gentle breeze that washes over you when you go outside during a brief spot of sunshine on a rainy day. That's right. I didn't actually have the determination to go that far. I need to strengthen my determination by the time the next family conference comes around. If I can't do that, then sticking around as a servant on this island is no more than I deserve. And at the same time, this is also a trial. True. A trial to be overcome. A trial? Why is that? Fool! Balor promised that he would come for you at the next family conference, did he not? He said he'd come on a white horse, right? Y yes You are thinking that Balor will not come anymore. In other words, you have no faith in Balor's promise. That's why this is a trial. To pass through this trial, you'll have to show that you can trust him and wait. A trial? If I hadn't thought of it that way, since he promised to come for me in a year, I need to believe that he'll come for me in a year. If I doubt that, I don't have the right to wait for him in the first place. Shannon. In fact, Balor might have left the Ushiromiya family because he set his sights on a future with you. Oh, why would that be? If he knows that you'll live together and eventually exchange marriage vows, having the name Ushiromiya would cause problems since Shannon is a servant of the Ushiromiya family. Ah, I see. 
He realized that there will be all kinds of trouble if he decides to marry a servant girl, so he's abandoned the Ushiro name beforehand. What do you think, Shannon? That way, everything makes sense. Balor has abandoned the Ushiromiya name for your sake. This sudden argument with Rudolph was just an excuse. What splendid reasoning. Nice going, Riche. <laughs> what do you say, Shannon? There's no reason to feel down. On the contrary, it's as though Balor has shown his determination first. <laughs> a smile had finally returned to my face. Of course I had to take the witches seriously and let myself be reassured. It was closer to the opposite. It was almost funny that they would think of such a ridiculously convenient explanations for everything. However, they made all those ridiculous theories to cheer me up. The witches are right when they say I must trust Balor, and that there's no point in moping about it just because I heard a few rumors. Until the next family conference, I intend to strengthen my resolve, and I'll believe that he'll accept my feelings and come for me. The idea that Balor loved the family so that he could be married to me someday was laughable, of course, but right now I should try and feel confident enough to accept even crazy ideas like that. Thanks so much! If I feel a little bit... <sighs> Thanks so much! I feel a little bit better now. That is well. I cannot stand watching you cry yourself to sleep. Thanks for coming into my dreams to encourage me. Indeed. It will be morning soon. This is all a dream. You won't remember any of it when you wake. However, your heart will be at peace. Yes. I'll believe in him and wait, so I won't listen to every little rumor. Very good. Wait until the next conference while improving yourself. If you think of it as training to become a wife, all of your everyday chores will become more meaningful. <laughs> Thanks a lot! Riche, it'll be morning soon. Is that so? Then so long, Shannon. You may not remember me, but I will always be by your side watching over you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. The next family conference will be here in a flash. Wait for it at your leisure. Balor will certainly keep his promise. One year later. 1981. Five years until the incident. Pleased to meet you. My name is Kyrie. I hope we can all become quick friends. I've known your name longer than I've known Asumus. I hear you're Rudolph's old girlfriend. <laughs> yes, we've known each other for quite a long time. Welcome to the Ushiromiya family. I hope you find it easy to grow comfortable in here. Yes. I'd like to grow comfortable quickly so I can support my husband. Look at how cute that little girl is. What's her name? This is Angie. What a cute name. So you two couldn't make up after all. Thought this would be the perfect chance to bring him back, but... He's as stubborn as dad. Will Balor ever come back? I'll miss him. Nothing wrong with a man having enough backbone to find his own way in the world. I'm sure he'll make it big by the time he comes back. You think so? Right now, Balor's home isn't home for him. The place he comes home to is somewhere else now. Enough! This concerns Rudolph's family only. It is not our place to meddle. Thank you, Kraus. This is an issue for our family alone. However, I do intend to do all I can see. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Kraus. This is an issue for our family alone. However, I intend to do all I can to see that Balor and Rudolph can live together again someday. 
After all, he's Angie's one and only big brother. Yep. When a kid gets stuck on something, anything you say to him will have the opposite effect. Asamu's father has a bit of a short temper. Looks like he's been adding fuel to the fire. It'll be okay. I'm sure he'll understand your feelings before too long. We can't do anything except cheer you on, even if he doesn't come back all the way. Oops. We can't do anything except cheer you on. Even if he doesn't come back, we're all praying that the two of you will make up quickly. It's a bit boring without Battler. Yeah, I hope he and Uncle Rudolph can make up soon. Thinking about how Battler feels, it must have hurt. His family's basically got swapped around. It probably doesn't feel comfortable at home anymore. All men need to go out on their own one day or another. It might just be that Battler's time has come. Do you think so? I do. It's not cool for a guy to hang around his parents for too long. You've got to leave the nest in a flurry and make a name in the world. I plan to do that eventually, but it looks like he's gone and done it first. And when he makes his name in the world and becomes a great man, will he come back? It may be that he never comes back. After all, this might be leaving the nest to him. Leaving the nest. Ballard didn't come, did he? Oh, ter- Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, how terrible! And I kept telling Shannon that he was sure to come. I'm sure she's very upset over Ballard's absence. And it's all because I got her hopes up. She's been looking forward to this day. It pains me to think of how she must feel. Thanks, you two. I'm okay. I've been reunited with the witches once again in that dream world. Though I couldn't remember anything during the day, now that I was in the dream world, I somehow knew that this was a reunion. The witches both looked apologetic, though they tried to cheer me up by saying that Battler would come today. Now that he hadn't come, it was like they'd been lying and they seemed to regret it heavily. Shannon. Um, well... Thanks for your concern. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't sad, but I'll be okay. Uh, are you sure? Really sure? That would be splendid, but... Clearly, Balor's fight was so over the top that he couldn't bring himself to come back so soon. Men are so stubborn. Y yes, that is true. He tried to act tough before running away, so his stubbornness is preventing him from taking back what he said so easily. He'll probably regret not coming today. Yes, that must be it. For some reason, they seem nearly desperate in their attempts to encourage me. It was almost funny to watch. I couldn't help but giggle. Thanks a lot, both of you. After all, you're the ones who told me in the first place that this is a test, a trial to be overcome. The truth was, I couldn't really fool myself so easily. When will he come back? When will he come for me? When isn't the question. Will he come for me ever? If I start moping right now, the uncertainty and sadness will probably tear me apart. But they taught me this is a trial to see whether I really believe in him or not. The very fact that I feel uncertain and anxious is a betrayal of my resolve and of his promise to come for me someday. George said something about it. He said this might be the same as leaving the nest for Balor. That's right. This is chance to leave behind the Ushiro Mia name and spread his wings as his own man. If you really think about it, we're still very young. Even if we want to be tied together, we're still lacking many years of social experience and trust. If Balor is really and truly taking this seriously, then it's too soon for him to come for me now. Well done. Yes, that is the right attitude. You've done well to reach this understanding. I haven't reached anything. However, I decided to think of it that way for now. This is a trial to see whether I trust Balor or not. So she's like 14, probably. I mean, if you want to put it in, in the terms that Genji put it, 11, but no. If he had come today, then today I would have to tell Madame that I wanted to quit my job as a servant. However, 
Was I really prepared to do that? Last night, I kept worrying about whether Balor would come or not. Thanks to that, not only did I not have the resolve to quit my job, I hadn't even started on the paperwork to do so. In short, I still don't have the determination that I promised him that day. I'm sure that God knew that. Balor will come for me when I found my determination. I wasn't determined, so it's only natural that he didn't come today. Yeah, it all makes sense now. So, I'm sure Balor didn't come today because I wasn't determined enough. It's only natural since I couldn't even truly believe that he would come. I'm sure Balor was the same way. He did not yet have the determination and resolve to come for you. God is not heartless when your feelings truly do draw close. I'm sure they'll bring the two of you together. Just like Orihime and Higoboshi. Yes, it's as though the weather just happened to be bad during this year's Tanabata, keeping those lovers apart for another year. That's how I like- Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm messing up. Let's try again. Yes, it's as though the weather just happened to be bad this year's Tanabata, keeping those lovers apart for another year. That's how I'd like to think about what happened today. That's how I'd like to think about it. I have no other choice. Valor. Oh my god, her magical thinking is killing me. If you're not uh, familiar with that way of thinking, it's just like, you probably won't get it. I, I don't know, but I mean, sometimes it's, it kind of, it can be unconsciously done, things like that, I don't know. I don't really have the energy to, do, to explain right now, I'm sorry. But Balor didn't come back for six years. Still a long way to go until then. So you had to wait six whole years feeling like that? When one waits every year for something to happen the next, and the same thing the next year and the next, it becomes the same as waiting for an eternity. Pretty pathetic, don't you think? After all this promise you thought you made with Balor seemed to be something he knew nothing about, right? Balor does tend to use melodramatic phrases, just like Uncle Rudolph. His roundabout way of putting things might have led to a misunderstanding. Some girl's gonna stab Balor in the back someday. Well... I guess that's more or less what this tale is. When words can mean different things, they can turn a person's life upside down. There are times when careless talk costs lives. Chapter 7, Sprout of Love, Root of Love One year later. So she's like 15, okay? Just in case someone feels like blowing up or whatever, it's like she's a teenager! 1982, four years before the incident. I'm sorry, I am gonna defend her to the end. Anyway. Seriously! Why do guys turn into total morons when they get together? Jessica's room was filled with laughter. It was one hell of a reality check. I thought those guys were a bit cool and a bit adult-like, and then I see them with some of the other guys in our class talking about dirty stuff with this creepy laugh. It's true that boys always act like little kids when they're together. Well, it's not like girls are any different. <laughs> the fun chat between girls continued without end. Tonight, Kraus and Natsu were out late at the meeting on Nijima. Most of the time, Natsu was always watching, so Jessica would always make sure to be curt with the young servants. And when Natsu wasn't around, Jessica never did that. She invited the servants of similar age to her room, and they were chatting away noisily. At that age, everyone wants to know about love. Thanks to the rigid and constricting way Jessica had been brought up, she enjoyed talking about it all the more. But you're pretty incredible, milady, and you're that age? Are there any boys you're interested in? Well, I'd like to fall in love, but there aren't really any g good ones around. I think you should be.
be a bit more proactive about it. You can act all relaxed now, but that's not going to last long, okay? Once one of your friends starts going out with someone, it'll turn your world upside down. There's no way that'll happen. None of my friends are traitors, I think. Ah, uh, no, no, no. The outbreak of love is one time. You can't rely on friendship between girls. If you met someone you like, you'd betray your friends and go out the guy without a second thought, wouldn't you? <laughs> what about you, Shannon? It's not fair if I'm the only one who has to talk. I, um... Don't have anyone like that around. Not around. He's far, far away. And like Orihime and Hikiboshi, I don't get to see him very often. In fact, I don't even know when I'll be able to see him again. However, I believe he'll come for me someday. I believe it. Don't betray me, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't you betray me, okay, Shannon? If we get boyfriends, we'll get them together. You got that? Right? Right? We promise, right? Well, you might not believe it, but it's not at all rare for girls just like Shannon to get a head start. <laughs> That's true. When I was like 15, yeah, when I was 15, I started dating. <laughs> and I thought I, and I, and I, I was bored of dating when I, or wanting to get married or being interested in real guys when I was like nine. Yeah, I was like, when I was five, I was like, I want to get married! And then I was like, nine, I'm like, oh, I'm bored. I just like 2D guys now. I'm like, nope! And then, and that, and now, like... I don't know how I got into my relationship when I was 15. <laughs> like, the only reason why I cared again was because, like... Like... He was just interested in things that I was just interested in. And I couldn't talk about it with anybody else. So, uh, it was a very niche thing. Cause, like, eh, I don't really care about s other people. Like, people's idea of what attractiveness is, is like, meh, I don't really give a shit. Uh, eh. Eh. Like, if you don't know... I mean, I feel like I'm kind of, like, gray, in a sense. Like, I, I'm, because anybody can, anyone can be good-looking or whatever, but it's just, like, it's how they just resonate when you talk with them that's just, and, like, you know, it's just something. Because I don't, I don't really care much about most people in that sense like a lot of people think that I'm like a very like some people would assume that I was a very flirtatious person but I'm just playful because like I just think oh I want to be everyone's friend so like so when they see me interacting with boys or girls or whatever but mostly just like I'll, I'll I don't care who I hang out with okay I don't give a shit it's annoying when people just assume things but whatever but anyway uh, I'm not gonna talk about that because I, I'm gonna be honest, if you can tell, I'm struggling to read. But let's keep going. Huh. Shannon, confess! You aren't going out with anyone, are you? You are, right? I I'm not, really. Really? R really. We'll get boyfriends together, okay? No matter what happens, okay? Anyone who lies has to eat a porcupine fish! Y yes I promise. Now there's the face of a liar! I'm willing to bet Shadow beats everyone else in this room. I can tell. It's always the quiet ones that go first. Shadow, how could you? Confess! Confess! Please stop, m'lady. Th that tickles! <laughs> And so another Sunday afternoon passed by. I worked my way out of the fight and looked up at the sky through the window. Is Balor happily chatting away with his friends somewhere right now, just like I am? As I think of you like this, are you thinking of me? But if I ask that, it's the same as admitting that I don't trust you. 
I'll wait. And when you do come for me, I'll announce then and there that I'm quitting my job. I've already prepared myself to do so, but you haven't come yet. That isn't because you won't come, but because I'm not determined enough yet, right? It's because I haven't clearly envisioned a future with you, right? I'll wait, no matter how long, until you come for me riding a white horse. I'll always treasure our promise, the promise of our precious resolve. Never make a promise with a guy. You can't count on them. Thinking that she had read my mind, I spun around. Of course she hadn't, but... Well, for stuff like that, I think guys and girls have different ideas of what's important. No, that's not it. You've got it all wrong. On the whole, girls tend to be dreamers, and guys just do stuff without thinking. I guess understanding between sexes is pretty much impossible after all. At least, I think it's pretty hard. Girls often have a bad habit thinking they know exactly what a guy is thinking right away. They search for hidden means behind words that guys say for no reason in particular, and just get the wrong idea. Ah, uh, yeah, I know girls like that. Those girls who hear something like anyone else could tell them that was trivial, but think it means that guy is totally into them. Yeah, I see it all the time. It's a bit sad when a girl gets the raw idea for no reason. <laughs> the pair of them laugh together. When a girl gets the wrong idea, could that be me? No, that can't be. After all, Bowler clearly made a promise. He said he'd come for me riding a white horse. I mustn't doubt. I'm sure this conversation I'm hearing is just another one of God's trials. So I won't listen. I won't care about it. If there's one thing I never want to be, it's one of those poor girls who thinks a guy's heart is linked to hers for no reason. <laughs> those demonic sneers tormented me and tried to lead me astray. I'm sure he'll come to the next family conference. But Balor didn't appear at the 1982 conference either. Bit by bit, things were changing from the way they'd been at the last family conference he'd come to. Everyone had gotten completely used to Kire, Rudolph's new wife. And she came down off the boat with a familiar stride. Her daughter Angie was growing well, and all the family focused their attention on her. Even Maria, though she was still tiny, was already five years old. She was full of energy and old enough to enjoy playing with George. Jessica and George had already stopped talking about Balor's absence. It was the same with the other relatives too. No one touched on the subject as though they had forgotten that Balor was missing. Maria had only been three when she last seen Balor. It was doubtful whether she even remembered him. In just two years, all trace of your existence has been erased from the Ushiromiya family conference. That made me sad, and so... So it looks like Balor didn't come back this year either. True. Feeling a bit lonely? Well, um... Uncle Rudolph and Aunt Kyrie didn't bring him up anymore. Doesn't look like Balor has much more serious about... Uh, I messed up, I'm sorry. Uncle Rudolph and Aunt Kyrie don't even bring him up anymore. It looks like Balor was much more serious about it than we thought. I wonder if he really will stay away forever. It looks like that was him leaving the nest after all. He's already spread his wings and left for a new stage of life. Don't you think so? He's always been crazy and reckless. Well, what more do you expect from a guy? Well, we know Balor. I'm sure he's adapted to his new life and is enjoying himself. So I don't think there's any reason to worry. When George said that with a smile, I felt a bit uncertain. What does he mean by there's no reason to worry? I'm sure he's enjoying himself. This is Balor we're talking about, so you bet he's forgotten all about us and is having a great time. Yeah, I bet he is, and I think that's for the best. Thinking for himself, his family, and his late mother, Balor decided on his own to find a new life. So I hope he lives that new life to the fullest. If he forgets about the Ushinomiya family, that's just perfect. George smiled at me, as though expecting me to agree. After a moment of shock, I smoothed my expression over and found the expression he was expecting. Is Balor living happily, having forgotten about the family, about me, about our promise? That can't be true. It just can't be. If 
Balor must be looking forward to that day of decision just like me. I'm not mistaken about that. He promised me. He said he'd come riding a white horse. I never asked him to say that. He said he'd come for me on the day I resolved myself to live for his sake. He made that promise himself. For two years, I believed that. I've done all I could to make it through God's trials and the whisperings of demons that tried to throw me from my path. And yet, the things both George and Jessica are saying are so cruel. Balor has forgotten about us and started a new life. Why are they telling me such lies? But that night, I dreamed of Balor for the first time in a long while. The Balor in my dream wasn't the Balor I believed in. It was the Balor that George and Jessica had spoken of. The one who had forgotten everything and started a new life. Morning. I woke up with a tear-stained face. The face I saw in the mirror cried and told me it wouldn't wait any longer. If I managed to wait this long, why can't I wait any longer? This is a trial, so we must believe in him and wait. But the me in the mirror spoke. It was sharper than a fragment of glass. I talk about this promise with him, but did we ever really make such a promise? Wasn't Jessica talking about it? That some girls are dreamers who get the wrong idea? That wasn't George talking about it too. He said that Balor had gotten used to his new life and forgotten about the Ushinomiya family. And by now, he isn't the only one who's forgotten. Unless I ask about it, everyone on this island has forgotten his name. Even Rudolph doesn't say his name anymore. If I weren't here to remember his face, perhaps his existence would have been erased from everyone's hearts. I don't believe it, so I won't doubt. Paolo must still remember his promise. We're both waiting for the day of decision. The day we'll be together. Paddler, I firmly made up my mind. Does the fact that you're not here mean that, after all, I'm not determined enough? No. It's because you and God are testing me, isn't it? In that case, I will endure. Until that promised day inevitably comes. So please, Battler, I want some proof that you haven't forgotten me. It was the crack that ran across my ceramic-like heart. I had to acknowledge it now. It may be that I'm pretending not to notice something terrifying and sad. Valor makes me yearn for him. Valor makes me sad. Valor makes it hurt. Valor, do you still remember me now? Oh my god. One year later. 1983. Three years until the incident. What do I want to say about this? I thought I wanted to say something, but I don't, I don't know, I don't remember anymore. And then, the third family conference since Balor left. If the number of beds was going to increase, we would have been told about that when setting up. The fact that nothing has changed in particular means that he probably won't be here this year either. Clinging to a final bit of hope, I stood by the docks watching the boat draw closer. Hey, Shannon. You're looking as pretty as ever. Careful, Angie. Watch your step. Hey, Shannon. I really do love Rokinjima. I can't wait for Uncle Cross to turn it into a resort. There's no need for that. It'd be such a waste. <laughs> you've got a point there. How have you been, Shannon? I think you've gotten a bit taller since last time. Thank you very much. And the weather's good again this year. It's so great having every single member of the family together all nice and cheerful. Please allow me to guide you to the mansion. Oh, okay, I, won't, I remember now. She owned parallels. Meikashi Hen. Oh, oops, I shouldn't have said that. I should have just mentioned the Ark. I'm sorry. So after all, Balor has been so thoroughly forgotten that he might not have existed in the first place. 
I'm sure the sadness will show on my face. Not wanting anyone to see it, I turned my back to the family and led the way up to the mansion by myself. Then suddenly, someone mentioned Balor's name and I jumped. What? You saw Balor? How's he doing? Yeah, he's doing very well. I took Angie and had some tea with him the other day. I was surprised, so Kiri was in touch with Balor. According to her, both Balor and Rudolph had long since calmed down after their fight, but both were so stubborn that they hadn't found a good chance to make up. And since Balor had gotten used to living with his grandparents and going to school there, and considering that those grandparents might make things even more difficult, going to convince Balor to come home wouldn't be easy. It's just too bad. I think Austin and his parents were even more angry than Balor was. This isn't just an issue between Balor and Rudolph anymore. Then will Balor be coming back anytime soon? He'll make up with Rudolph, but it looks like he doesn't intend to return to the Ushiromiya family. Such a shame. Though, I do understand how he feels. It was a bit of a relief to hear that some of the bad feeling had died down in these three years. If we take Asumu's parents into account, it's no surprise that things haven't gone as well as they could. But if Balor doesn't hate Rudolph anymore, then someday, surely he'll come back. He'll have grown so much. My resolve will not waver anymore. For some nights these past three years, I felt sad and resentful. But now it feels as though those three years were something I needed. After all the seeds of love, the faint feelings I once had for you, have budded powerfully waiting for the day that we'll be reunited. This is how honest my feelings for you are now. I love you. I want to see you again as soon as I can. Until that time, I'll keep that bud of love warm and growing for you. I doubt that coming of that... I won't doubt that... I'm sorry, I'm messing up. Okay, let's try again. <clears throat> I won't doubt that day of coming anymore. Just as I think of you under the same sky. I believe that you are thinking of me. I'm sure this news about him is a sign that God is cheering me on. So I ask God one more time inside my heart. Since my feelings for Balor haven't wavered for a day since these past three years. Let me know that he feels the same way. I know that asking for that is a sin. However, now that we reach a three year turning point. I want some gift from God. Any gift to show that I have not waited in vain. That is what I prayed. Oh, that's right. It's been so long since Balor last saw you all, right? I thought you might be feeling lonely, so I told him to write you letters. Here they are. Huh? Did God really hear my prayers? I felt as though my heart was going to leap out of my chest. A letter from Battler? Awesome! What'd he write? Did he say anything about how he's been doing lately? I can't wait to read it. Kiri pulled a brown envelope out of her bag and handed it to George. Just one. When George opened it, several full of letters came out. Looks like this one's addressed to me. They all have different names on them. Here, this one's yours, Jessica. Thanks! And this one's for Maria. Can she read yet? I'll read it to her later. Thank you. There's one even for Angie. Now, of course she can't read. <laughs> I'll give it to her when she does learn. He says he's doing great and having a blast. Good for him. Um, is that all of them? Yep. Looks like that's all of them. Thanks a lot. George handed me an empty envelope. Apparently he thanked me because he thought I was offering to throw it away for him. And clearly, there was nothing inside of it. There was no letter for me. Whoa, the more I read, the more fun it looks like Balor's been having, living every day to the fullest. That's what it looks like in mine too. If he's happy, then I guess that's what counts. <laughs> that's so mean of Balor, oh wait. <laughs> That's so mean of Balor. It sounds like he's forgotten about us until you told him to write those letters, Kyrie. Oops, who the hell is that speaking? 
Well, you know what he's like. It sounds like he was living life to the fullest. And I hear he's popular with the ladies at school, too. Wow! That's incredible! There should be plenty of girls who like those hilarious melodramatic lines of his. Makes sense to me. I wonder if he really does plan to not return to the Ushiromiya family. It looks like it. In mine, he says he doesn't even think he'll return to Rokinjima again. I knew that all these letters were trials from God. The fact that there was no letter for me. The fact that he was enjoying life and forgotten about Rokinjima. Were just more trials. He is... God is... Testing me. The fact that there was no letter for me alone is proof of that. That's... What I want to think, but now it's just too much. It might have been an important promise to you, but it looks like it wasn't for Balor. No way. And that promise about him coming for you was... It, I was a dreamer. It was an illusion I created. To Balor, they were probably just meaningless words to make him sound cool. To anyone but her, it would have been such a funny story to hear. That promise with Balor might have been an illusion the whole time. In the first place, we don't even know if they both felt the same way about each other at all. Love is an illusion. However, if both sides are seeing the same illusion, that love becomes true. However, when the feelings of each side are different, then it's nothing more than a joke. That is Balor's sin. Making Shannon think that it was a promise? Wrong. Huh? It's that he didn't even remember. If he simply broke his promise, I could have taken him to task for it. I could have regretted my mistakes or have... I'm sorry. If he simply broke his promise, I could have taken him to task for it. I could have regretted my mistake, or I could have won him back. However, you can't question someone about something they don't even remember. I am unable to hate Battler. After all, Battler didn't even break his promise. There was just, an, there just wasn't any promise to start with. It was nothing more than. A sad joke. I kept on crying and crying. I dug my fingernails into my pillow, soaking it with my tears. How much easier would it be to hate something? But I can't hate anything. I just couldn't get over my miserable arrogance, which had led me to believe for three whole years that he felt the same as I did. I am to blame for this. My irresponsible words led you to believe that Balor made a promise. No, this isn't anyone's fault. It's all because I assumed that he felt the same way I did. Balor made no promise, and yet his feelings were surely sincere. Though there might have been a difference in degree when compared to yours, it is true that he liked you. Of that, there can be no doubt. Please, just stop it. I believe that he liked me the way I liked him without ever doubting that. Please don't try to cheer me up. I'd rather that you mocked me. Before I knew it, a dull, inescapable pain had pierced my chest. When I pressed my hand against my chest, I realized what that pain was. It was the bud of love, those seeds I'd sown and nurtured in my heart. Its roots had spread all the way across my chest tormenting me like a metal wire wrapped around my heart. They look less like roots and more like fissures running through my heart. I can only hold back the pain by tearing out the root of love, but no matter how much I scratch at it, I'm only scratching at my chest. The root of love doesn't move at all. If I started hating Balor without any lingering interest or regrets, I'd be able to pull this root out easily. Once I did, I could probably leave a hole behind, but at least it wouldn't hurt me anymore. But I can't pull it out. Even though it hurts so much, those roots of love are still stuck in my heart. Shannon. I... 
Even now, I love Battler. I want to see him. I want him to come back. I believe he will come back someday. And I want to wait for him. But right now, it's just too much. As I sobbed, the tightness in my chest grew even stronger. As long as I like Battler, that pain will always continue. Because I like him. Because I want to hold on to that pain forever. But it was right, right there in those letters for George and the others. Battler doesn't plan on returning to the Ushiromiya family. He's forgotten about me in Rokinjima and started a new life with a different name. I must wait for him for all eternity, despite how painful, aching, excruciating this is. Is this another trial? Is God telling me to wait for him forever? I can't do that. I want to be with Pallor, but if this is the trial that I must go through for that, then it's just too painful. Beatrice hung her head in shame. If she hadn't encouraged Shannon so much, it probably wouldn't have been this painful. Shannon must have been the one to sow the seed of love in her heart. However, Beatrice had irresponsibly watered it and told Shannon not to give up. Beatrice scratched at her chest, trying to share Shannon's pain. This is my fault. Beatrice mumbled to herself. What's your fault? Oops, I'm sorry. What's your fault? For three years I tortured you with the illusion of a promise that never happened. If I had not nourished the bud of love within you, you would not have suffered so. Shadow, this may sound harsh, but listen. What is it? Forget Balor. There was no bud of love in the first place. No, I'm the one who nourished it. No matter how painful it is, I can't forget it. But you cannot bear that pain any longer, can you? Wordlessly, Shannon held her chest and hung her head. I love Battler. That feeling burns inside me, so I still cannot let it go, no matter how much it hurts. And I've spent three years pretending that I didn't feel that pain. Now I know that I feel it, and since I know, I can't bear it. So you cannot throw away your butt of love for Battler? Yes. However, at this rate, the bud, the root, will kill you. People need a universe to survive, and one person cannot create that universe alone. Two are needed. A universe. Together with Valor, you created that universe of that bud of love. Now that one half of that pair is gone, your universe has crumbled. People cannot create a complete universe on their own. Have Balor, the other person who create. Oh, I'm sorry, I messed up. Let's try again. Balor, however, the other person who creates my universe won't come back. Then you must create a new universe with someone else. You mean create one with someone other than Balor? I will give you such a person. Which person? A creature to bury the pain in your heart and heal you. He will not betray you. Yes. Let it be a sibling. I will give you a little brother. A little brother? A boy you have always been close to at the Fuquin house, whom you love as if he were your real brother. That I shall give to you. Together with him, you will create a new universe. I'm sorry, I messed up. Let me try again. A boy that you've always been close to at the Fuquin house, whom you love as if he were your real brother, that I shall give to you. Together with him, you will create a new universe. Will that little brother make me forget about the pain of my love for Balor? Correct. You need a universe. 
then what will happen? To the bud of love in my heart, my feelings for Balor won't change. I can't make them wither. I shall accept that bud and those roots in your place. You will. You can forget the pain of love and create a new universe. I will accept the bud of love in your place. It means I will accept the pain as well. But I will learn of the single element I do not possess. Love. Beatrice wanted to know love. She wanted to feel what Shannon had felt in the world of humans. And, if Balor ever does return, if the bud still has not withered and you still desire it, I shall return it to you. What do you think of that? Still hanging her head, Shannon gave a small nod but said nothing. It would mean release from this unbearable pain. And it would mean giving the bud of love to the witch to hold in her place. Shadow spread the hands that she held to her chest. As she did, a faint light popped out of her chest and floated in the air, gradually swallowing everything with its brightness. As the brilliant light began to fade away, Shadow and Beatrice, still facing each other, were now inside a vast, starry sphere, like a planetarium. They were the only ones in this pitch-black starry sea. Shadow felt as though she'd seen this place once before, but she couldn't remember. Then I made another announcement. Modify this world. Let the bud of love travel from Shannon to Beatrice. This way Shannon won't be tormented by the bud of love anymore. And furthermore, she'll be given a little brother with whom she can create a new universe. The design for the little brother will be a younger boy of the Fuquin house, with whom Shannon was close. For a name, let there be the own character as the Fuquin house rules state. Yeah, I've decided. That's a perfect name to go with Shannon's. He'll be a quiet, reticent boy. He'll come to Rokinjima as a new servant. There, he'll open his heart to Shannon. As a duty-minded boy who loves Shannon like a big sister, he'll always be there for her. Let's have him be a special servant like Genji, who is permitted to serve Kinzo directly. Yeah, that sounds kind of cool. Then Beatrice, from now on, you'll carry the bud of love. In other words, the role of being infatuated with Balor and waiting for his return will go to you. While you are still the witch who reigns over Rokinjima's night, you will also have been waiting for Ushiromiya Balor ever since that day three years ago. Along with this change in setting, I'll give you a new form as well. He did tell us what his ideal woman would look like once, remember? A woman with a good figure and a long golden hair like a foreign model. Golden hair. Long hair. A good figure. Yeah. Something like that. That's what the new Beatrice will look like. Come now, hold that bud of love in your heart as you wait for Battler. This way you will learn of love in exchange for earning pain. Yes, this will be my setting for my new world. For Shannon, a new servant like a little brother will come. He will be a silent reticent boy, a duty mighty kid who loves Shannon as a sister. And the bud of love that has tortured Shannon will go to the witch Beatrice. She will just be holding on to the bud of love for him for the time being. However, while she holds on to it, she will be a maiden in love with Balor. For that time, you will be able to learn what love is. Come, let the world be modified. Oh, I am one, yet many. Awaken us, and stretch your wings in this new world. Slowly I opened my eyes to the gentle rays of the morning sun. How long has it been since I last saw such a pleasant morning? The face of my mirror is tear-stained and pathetic. However, my heart is as clear as the morning sun. 
I could still clearly remember that strange dream. However, I can feel myself forgetting it rapidly. The place I was in my dreams had been such a strange place. A peaceful, calm place. There, I had left behind the pain I had carried in my chest until yesterday. So this morning, my heart was at peace. Good morning, me. My tear-stained face really is pathetic. However, my expression is bright and cheery. Even now, I like Battler. But for some reason, I've calmed down. It feels like I've put something precious safely away in a place it belongs. Battler, when will you come back, I wonder? When you do, I'd like to talk about mystery novels again. Oh, I almost forgot. A new boy sir will be coming today, right? One of the rare servants who will serve the master directly. What kind of kid will he be? I hope we get along well. What was his name again? I'm pretty sure it was, um... We'll be taking a break soon, but I wanted to talk about this. When she decided to make canon in a way to... The way that canon was made... I remember when I was at a point of despair, but not like Shannon. All right, hold on. One year later. 1984. Two years until the incident. Okay. But I remember that I, I didn't have the same issue as Shannon when I was like 14 or whatever. I had a different issue. It just had to be, it's just some family problems and like, and stuff. Like, I had friends, but you know how it is when you have people around you? They might care about you to an extent, but you don't have anybody that you trust. And if you try to trust them with your other problems, they won't listen. So, for me, I decided the only, it's kind of like the only one who will care about you is yourself. The only one that will listen to your problems is yourself. So I decided that I would have my own self or another part of me that would actually listen. Because, well... Yeah. I mean, you see Shadow, she doesn't have anyone that she trusts. But she made herself a brother, or something. I don't... And I... Or... And as you know... I mean, it implies other things, but... I kind of relate to some of those things in my own way. But I I have my own reasons why I did that. And why I can relate to how she made canon in that way. In that sense of how I would sometimes act. Like, except I don't express it the way that she will dress up. I started acting a little more differently. Because... I remember when I was like 15, after I did something like that, I acted more cold and distant, or I wouldn't talk as much and stuff, and sometimes I still kind of have aspects of that where I won't talk to anyone unless I'm spoken to, or I just won't interact with people, because I actually used to be way more friendly back in the day, but yeah. So I remember, like, it. it's kind of like... It's more like my facade or persona in that sense, or more like in a way to cut other people off or keep them away from me, in a sense. Because, I don't know. It's like I said, trust issues. It's like that. That's all I'll explain, because the reasoning behind why I did all those things is like, not really an issue for this video. Because, I mean, the stream, because, uh, it's Umineko. And we're learning about Shannon's thing. That's all I'll say. That I relate to Canon in that sense. And the way that Shannon, like, Shannon, like, or Sayo, like, created, like, 
she designed her original character to pander to battle her. It's, I'm, like, I relate to her very much in that sense of that I would pander to other people in that sense of creating an idea of what is attractive in that sense, or, or an idea of that. I remember my best friend asking me, why do you draw your characters with big boobs? Or whatever, and I'm like, the same reason be, uh, that Sayo would give her character, her OC big boobs. Okay? Like, she's so relatable in that sense. I don't have the exact same problems with her, but they're pretty similar in their own ways in within their... They're similar, but, I mean, without the context, I mean, with the context, they're different. It's similar, but different in the, at the same time. Like, you can relate because it, you've been through something similar. Anyway, I have to go on break. I'll be back. I have to clean my face. Because I was crying. <laughs> Alright, I'm back. <sighs> Let's continue. Men in work clothes were spreading a tarp over the section of the hall. From the way they measured the wall and set out tools, it could be seen that they were planning some sort of construction project. This is the utmost importance of the master. Be sure that you do not damage it. The president of the construction company nodded his head at several times to show that he understood. And six young workers carried in a large rectangular object wrapped in a white sheet. Okay, careful there! Sit her down gently! I said gently. Is this a spot? Great, let's get started. Apparently they're putting something large onto the wall of the hall. He plans to hang that thing there. That's what he wants. After all, this mansion is a little more than one of Father's toys. Natsi took a deep breath. Though this is a whim of Kinzo's, a man she greatly respected, she seemed to resist the idea of hanging it right here in the entrance hall, the base of the mansion. When the white sheet was pulled off, a western woman wearing a beautiful dress came into view. It was a massive portrait of a woman. Is it proceeding well? Yes, it will be finished by this evening. I would like to see it hanging there for all to see as soon as possible. I want you overseeing this, my friend. Leave it to me. Father, it seems a splendid portrait. Indeed. Quite exceptional quality. I am satisfied. 
This is your benefactor, the one who gave you the gold, right? Indeed! If I had not met Beatrice, I would not be here, nor would the Ushiomiya family, nor would, of course, this mansion. It's only natural her portrait be displayed in the best possible location. Now that he had said this bluntly, there would be no contradicting him. Kraus and Natsu could only shrug. If only he didn't met Beatrice, you asshole! Master, the epitaph plate is here. Would you please check to see that all is in order? Indeed, each and every word must be correct. Epitaph, Kraus and Natsuhi crooked their heads and followed Kito. The leader of the workers set down the plate wrapped in a sheet. Oh, look. You can read it all in Japanese. <laughs> okay, I can't read those that well. I can't read those. I can read that one, but I can't read all of them. <laughs> the others thought that the picture's name and description might be on it, but it seemed to have quite a lot of words for that. Father, what is this? Behold, the sweet fish river running through my hometown. Heh, <laughs> heh, read and interpret it as you like. So we're finally reaching the appearance of the epitaph in the portrait. I don't know much about this epitaph. It doesn't exist in my world. Probably not. In your world, there's already a clear successor. You. But not in this world. In other words, this epitaph was set up to choose Grandfather's successor after all. Most likely. Or he might have wanted to believe in the chance of a miracle. A difficult riddle made so that no one would be able to solve it. If someone could actually solve it, they themselves would be a miracle. Perhaps that miracle would guide the person Kinzo wanted most to solve it. In short, this epitaph really does depict- Oh, oops! In short, this epitaph really does depict a ceremony to revive the witch Beatrice, just as everyone thought? That does seem to be the obvious interpretation. A mysterious ceremony sacrificing 13 people to revive the witch. However, the true ceremony wasn't that. It lies in wait for someone to miraculously solve it. That is the true ceremony. However, fate does have its irony. Genji already knew. Making Hinzo set this up in the first place, because he guessed that Genji knew everything. Was that fate a coincidence or something planned? I do not know. However, with this epitaph, the witch Beatrice will revive in the truest sense. Chapter 8 Journey to the Golden Land. a bit to rearrange the seating. Oh, crud. Oops. Hold on. You may hear some movement, but don't worry about it. Oh, crap. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right, let's continue. This is Beatrice. My soul was captured by the woman's show in that massive portrait. 
That might have been literally true, or rather than captured. Perhaps it would be better to say that my soul had returned to a more fitting place than it belonged. The beautiful blonde hair was the same as mine, but tied up. The dress she wore was a deep black, making that golden hair stand out all the more. This is the witch Beatrice, my true form. <laughs> what is this? There was a plate with too many words for it to be the tile of the picture. Behold the sweet, behold the sweet fish river running through my beloved hometown. You who seek the golden land, follow its path downstream in search of the key. The golden land, I see. So my world is the golden land. I've always called my own personal world a paradise, but tonight I shall change that. From now on, my world shall be the golden land. I am the master of the golden land, Beatrice. And then there is the brutal ceremony of sacrifices starting on the first twilight. On the ninth twilight, the witch shall revive, and none shall be left alive. If I carry out this ceremony, will I revive in the truest sense? Then, on the tenth twilight at journey's end, you shall attain to the power of the Golden Land's treasures once and for the last time. The witch shall praise the wise and bestow four treasures. One shall be all the gold from the Golden Land. Oh, that, by the way, that was the part I started reading at. <laughs> if you heard me whispering it barely. Because I can't read it well. Anyway. Kinzo received a massive amount of gold from Beatrice, and rumor has it he still lies hidden somewhere. It's this as his family members and servants were all whispering. A code showing the location of Kinzo's hidden gold. If a human solves it, they will obtain a great quantity of gold. However, if I do, it will mean my own resurrection. Kinzo, you aging magician. Just when I was mocking the shortness of time left to you, you start a game like this. How interesting. I'll definitely solve it. Then I will revive as the real Beatrice. When that happens, I will use my great magical power to rule over object and man, day and night, and all of Rokenjima. Everyone says that an epitaph is a guide to finding hidden treasure. The rumors say that the master has ten tons of gold hidden away. Yes, and Beatrice supposedly gave it to him. I've heard that one too. Ten tons of gold? That would be incredible. I can hardly even imagine it. If you had all that, what would you use it for? I'd like to touch it just once. Shut up, Gona. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Forget touching it. I'd like to spend it all. But why would he go out of the way to display the? But why would he go out of this way to display this epitaph? This code showing the hidden. But why would he go out of his way to display this epitaph? This code showing. What the hell is wrong with me? I know I'm sad and I'm more likely to mess up, but this isn't cool. But why would he go out of his way to display this epitaph? This code showing the hiding place of the gold. That's obvious. He's laughing at everyone since he thinks no one can solve it. It's a challenge to the rest of us, isn't it? He wants us to know if there's anyone here wise enough to solve it. It seems the master doesn't intend to let Kraus take the headship easily. Perhaps the one who solves this will become his successor. Genji, what is this? Could this be a portrait of Beatrice? The Beatrice, the Beatrice. Of course, this Beatrice. What on earth? There's a strange little poem-like thing over there. What is this all about? It's almost like a pirate code that shows the way to a hidden treasure. Genji, what does this mean? Okay, who's talking? I know there's Genji, but then there's Ava. Is there anyone else? What on earth? There's a strange little poem-like thing over there. What's this all about? It's almost like a pirate code that shows the way to hidden treasure. Genji, what does this mean? The master said to read and interpret it as you wish. 
uh, riddle applies equally to all who can see the epitaph. You said riddle just now, didn't you? That means this can be solved. Yes, that's it. Father doesn't want Nisa to succeed him. So whoever solves this will become the successor. <laughs> Finally, the tables have turned, and now I have a real chance to become the head! What do you think, Kyrie? I think it's extremely likely this epitaph points to the location of the hidden gold. Looks like Aneki thinks the one who will solve will become the successor. That's another theory that might fit. Father certainly doesn't view Kraus as an ideal successor. This might be a huge trick he's setting up now, now that he's reaching the end of his years. So if you really saw this riddle, you stand at gain ten tons of gold in the position of successor. On the surface, perhaps. However, I'm sensing some malice, as though he doesn't think anyone is capable of solving it. I doubt he made it to be solved easily. True. <laughs> Guess we won't have any trouble looking for something to do over a drink wall now. Ridiculous. How could anyone solve this? Rosa tossed aside a notepad with an epitaph written on it and flopped over the sofa. Solving this means ten tons of gold. With that much, I never need to worry about schemes for cash again. If I had money, I could pay off my debts, and that man might come back to me. I know where Father's beloved hometown is, and the, the Sweet Fish River. There are many rivers there. What's the village supposed to be? Uh, I don't have a clue. Ah, what's wrong, Mama? Maria looked concerned. Kids are really good at riddles, so maybe. Hey, Maria, do you think you know the answer to this riddle? Maria gazed at the paper with the epitaph as though she was trying to bore through it with her eyes. Her eyes opened wider and wider. What do you think, Maria? I guess it might be a bit too hard for you. <laughs> this is a witch's ceremony! A resurrection ceremony for Beato! Where'd you get this? Hey, Mama! Where'd you get this? I'm gonna ask Beato! I'm sure the ceremony will let Beato regain her full power! She'll be able to appear in front of everyone and do miracles and magic without having to worry about the anti-magic toxin anymore! <laughs> Epitaph! It seems the family members are all competing to solve the riddle. Huh! Good! Let everyone try, and none will solve it. Sure! Except for the one blessed by a miracle. If I let my guard down, even I might forget the process. That is how difficult it is. Because it is difficult solving it will bring about a miracle. Precisely! This miracle should be the last one I desire in my life. My final bit of magic. When a miracle comes and swan and pff, when a miracle comes and allows one to solve that complicated epitaph, it will surely mean Beatrice's resurrection. Oh Beatrice! I just want to see your face one more time. I don't need wealth or honor anymore. If only I could meet you one more time. This would be the last bit of magic that Kinzo, who realized he was facing his last years, would ever use. He was betting everything that Beatrice had given him, hoping to meet her one more time, after being separated by death through two generations. That's sick. His meeting with Beatrice that day had been the true beginning of his life. And even with them gone, Kinzo had remained there alone on that stage that had gone dark. The aged monarch had obtained everything, accomplished everything, but this was the one element that always slipped through his fingers, no matter how much he struggled. If he could just have that element, he would need nothing else in life. In the end, 
Perhaps his whole life was a journey to learn that one single element makes up all that it means to be human. My friend, will my life's final bit of magic show me a miracle? For a while, Genji was silent. He wasn't at a loss for words or struggling to find an answer. During that silence, something had passed between the two men who had known each other for so long that their friendship surpassed that of master and servant. No, that will do. No one will solve it. That is why a miracle will occur. Master, please tell me one thing. Hmm? What is it? If I ask you, if a miracle does occur... Hmm? It may have been different during his youth, but in his old age, Genji rarely spoke of dreams and what-ifs. When Genji said if, Kinzo quietly waited for the words of the man he called a friend. If a miracle does occur, if your magic comes true, and Beatrice does revive, what will you do? As the one closest to Kinzo, Genji obviously knew of the crazed feelings with which Kinzo had searched for Beatrice in the past. And yet, Genji was asking what Kinzo would do if Beatrice did revive. Master, at one time in the past, you experienced the miracle of Beatrice being reborn. If that miracle happened again, what would you do? My friend, so after all, you do blame me. I have no way of knowing everything in your heart and Beatrice's. However, I believe I do understand at least part of the way in which Beatrice adored you. I lament the fact. You may not believe it, but I have age and I have come to regret all of it. If a miracle does occur, and Beatrice revives, then of course I do not care if she knows nothing of the time she spent with me in the past. No, as long as she is Beatrice, I do not care who it is. I just want to apologize. Is that truly how you feel? Yes, my friend, I regret it. How deeply I regret those mistakes made in youth. You have aged as well, so you must know. One cannot feel guilt for the sins of their youth when one is still young. However, like deep thorns, they begin to fester, torturing me. I, Ushiro Mia Kinzo, no longer care how I die. However, this thorn, this regret, is the one account I must settle. I will return everything to Bandriche, and I will ask her to forgive me for my sins. For that is... That is my only final wish. Oh. Oh. Ah! Kinzo covered his eyes and sobbed. The aged monarch who had built great wealth in a single generation was reaching the end of his life. And he could do nothing but sob because he wanted someone to apologize to. Wasn't the epitaph a trial grandfather made to choose his assessor? I thought that too at first, but it looks like the situation's a bit different. At this point in time, I also thought it was a ritual. That it was a game for selecting the successor, which Ushiro Miyakinzo decided upon a whim. And it wasn't? This epitaph meant something for Ushiro Miyakinzo and Ronoe Genji that only the two of them could understand. So... This was not the workings of fate. It was inevitable. I was no more than a Cinderella with a pumpkin carriage and glass slippers all prepared beforehand. I get it. So, this is a farce that Kinzo and Genji set up. In other words, this is bullshit. Kinzo is a bastard that doesn't deserve shit. Kinzo did understand. And Genji realized that this was a message. I, I don't have a clue what you mean. What did Grandfather understand? And what does Genji have to do with this epitaph? The epitaph wasn't solved. Someone was made to solve it. 
and then Beatrice truly revived. But that revival had never happened. And 1986 still would have come, but the incident might have been completely different. And so, since the time of my birth, I have been trapped by the crossroads of fate, never given the right to make any decisions of my own will. Oh, I am one yet many, and yet we have never been able to resist fate. We are little more than the leaves caught in a whirlpool. No matter how much we dance, we must eventually be sucked in and disappear. Uh, just in case, I kind of want to emphasize, like, okay, so she's, like, she's still a teenager. And, like, okay, she's been raised all her life to have a mentality that is almost, that is defeatist. Like, and, like, like, she doesn't really have a will of her own in that sense. Because, like, it's kind of, it's hard. Especially with the way that she set herself up with her mindset that trapped her. So before anybody criticizes her like that, it's just like, that's what I want to say. Like, you can't just be like, oh, I have a revelation. I did some self-analyzation and be like, oh, oh, I realized things. Oh, I don't have to do it like that. It's not that easy. It would, it, it's never that easy. Okay? Like, It, uh, it, it's so hard to, when you're, like, trapped by the way that you think. Like, if you've ever heard of a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset, people who believe that they are talented or, like, or people who are raised to believe that there are smart people or talented people and they don't believe in the merits of hard work in that sense. I mean, yeah, there's some genetic stuff, like, with athleticism and stuff like that, but, like... If you don't believe that you can, in yourself, that you can keep trying and succeed in that sense, then you probably won't try. Because you don't believe that you're capable. You know? In some ways, you kind of have to bullshit yourself to believing. Like the people who say, fake it till you make it, you know? Um, but yeah. It, it's not like it's easy. So, like, I don't want people being like, Oh my god, why didn't she do this? It's, it's like, uh, okay, well, there's plenty of reasons. Like, if you're raised a certain way, you might have a fear of rejection. And it's, it's just... And it's clear that, like, she's extremely lonely. So she'll do anything to please... She's a people pleaser. For what? Okay. I'm not a psychologist, okay? I just have an interest in information. So I will just pick up information and I had I have a I had a lot of time to think. So I, I don't know shit. Don't take my word for it. In that sense, but like I mean I it's not like I've I mean I read a lot of stuff. But that's that's not not the same as like, you know, okay? So like that that's why. Okay. Um, I have to take a short break again. Sorry.
Sorry, I'm on a cookie break. I need to replenish my blood sugar because I'm starting to feel faint. So just give me a moment while I chew on some cookies so I don't feel like shit. <laughs> Give me a moment. <laughs> Who am I looking at? Give me a moment. Um, okay. Huh, for some reason I missed something. <laughs> Sorry about that, I'm on my cookie break and I don't want to crash from lack of sugar. If I can't, if I don't do it right, I will feel faint. I'm also looking at my phone. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready now. <laughs> Catch someone who specializes in instant movement. She's the 33rd in the rank of great demons. You must really be incredible to have a friend like that, Phanto. Ah! I see the great demon gap. Very well, my friend. You will now be gap. You may call yourself by that name. Oh, wonderful. So you've finally given me a name. It's a relief after being nameless so long. In that case, I would be honored to receive a name as well. Being nothing more than a head virtue likes flavor, does it not? Maria, I need a name for this guy too. He's also a great demon and serves as my butler. He's a subordinate whom I can trust. Ah! Run over there, yes! My, what a coincidence. The family names of my double, Genji, is Ronoe. Oh, that truly is a coincidence. I see. It seems this is the best possible name for you. Very well. You shall now be known as Ronoe. Oh, how pleasant it is to be called by one's name. I thank you for this wonderful name, Lady Maria. Just the form can be a vessel, and it can be a powerful vessel too! For unknown creatures of the other world, simply gaining a name can greatly increase their magical power! That's why names are important! Ah! True. Names are important and wonderful. Right, Leah? You can call me Gap now, okay? Gap. 
a splendid name, I will remember it. And I ask you to stop shortening my precious name. <laughs> I'm never going to learn how to do Renovi's laugh. I'm sorry. It's too hard. I can't do... It's too hard. It's just like how I can't roll my R's. So you're just going to have to learn that. So you're Virgilia, the one who guides travelers to Beatrice. That's also a splendid name. Perfect for my lady's teacher. Yes, I do like it a lot. A name is a life. Maria, thanks to you, my friends have found names. I'm deeply grateful. Ah, ah! Now it's your turn, Beto! Draw pictures of my bunny friends, like you did for Sakutaro! Hmm, very well. Lend me that grimoire. What do you... Beto's drawings are really great! I can't wait to see! They were in the forest band, were they not? A band. A band. Hmm. Yes, yeah, something like... All of a sudden, Mania was no longer a little girl who did nothing but follow her mother around laughing or crying. Though she's still young, she already had a powerful self-image and possesses enough knowledge of the magical world to surprise even me. Oops. Let's reread that again. All of a sudden, Maria was no longer a little girl who did nothing but follow her mother around laughing or crying. Okay, let's check the tips. Nope, none. Anything here? No. Though she's still young, she already has a powerful self-image and possesses enough knowledge of the magical world to surprise even me. Together we call ourselves Mariaji Shoshier and made each other's magical worlds deeper and richer. So a name can become a powerful vessel. How profound. It's very important to have a form for a vessel, but a name is just as important. Indeed. Those with names leave a greater impression than those without. It's not just about forms and names. By knowing more and more about them, you can make them exist much more strongly. So, I'll think of lots of stuff for you. Did you do this for Sakutaro as well? Yep! Sakutaro isn't just a name. There's a lot more to him than that. He's a lion- Oh, my bad. He's a lion cub, correct? Sakutaro is a Vegeta lion, so he doesn't eat me. But everyone thinks he does, and they're scared of him. But Sakutaro is also a scary cat, so he needs just as scared as the others. <laughs> Sakutaro is such a coward! What do you... I don't eat meat. I'm not a scary lion. Oh look! A flesh-eating sparrow! Pop, pop, pop! What do you... Sparrows are scary! Whoosh! <laughs> Sparrows don't eat meat. Sakutaro's a coward, so he thinks he do. <laughs> did, did the sparrow go away? Did you? You're such a scary cat, Sakutaro. If you keep this up, Sakusuke and Sakukichi will start making fun of you again, right? Did you? I'm not a scary cat. I'm a sparrow's back! Flap, 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 flap! No, I'll be in! Whoosh! <laughs> Sakutaro is quite entertaining. Then, are Sakusuke and Sakukichi his siblings? Yep! There is little brothers waiting for him at home! Sakusuke is a lot more reliable than Sakutaro, and Sakukichi is so skillful, he can do anything! But, they're all really good friends! They'll all play together on my bed! Your bed must be covered with lions. Yep! So I can call my bed Lion Land! But, there's lots of other animals too! Ah! I remember when I made my own little animal OCs. Lion Land, is it? Sounds like fun. 
By interacting together, all of Mari's friends can reinforce their own existence. It's a magnificent world. I guess that means we should work on deepening our relationships as well. By strengthening our bonds, our existence and magical power will grow stronger and stronger. Let's expand our world more and more. From what I've heard, Maya's world has far more than just Sakutara and the bunnies. We can't let her beat us. My, my. In that case, should we find more minions for ourselves? It's no fun with just the gold butterflies. After all, they cannot speak. I'd like just some chatty minions who can talk and jump around and fight with each other. True, of course, it'll be better to spice things up around here. Here in Mariaji Shoshia, we have learned how to expand our worlds and create new minions. By now, you may create new minions as often as your imagination allows. Milady, what about those? Could you make vessels of those dark tools you found when cleaning out Goldsmith's storage room? Oh, perfect! Minions created from dark-looking vessels like that will surely be fitting for me. There will be more and more of us, and it will get very lively here. Create them and I grow them. Indeed, that's Mariage Chorchier for you. Mm, still, bunny ears are pretty hard. It might take some time before the bunnies manifest themselves. Be sure you make them cute. But of course, this is where I get to show my skill. Create a creature, give it a name, give it a form. Doing that is no different from giving birth to new life. I remember when I was making a magical compendium and I had a best friend, and I don't have that anymore to do that with, but anyway. When a human gives birth to a child, they give it a form. Give it a name to identify it by and deepen its character by raising it in the world. Mariage Shoshier is doing exactly the same thing. In our world, we can create whatever creatures we think of, give them forms, give them names, and make them friends we can interact with. We were engrossed with our game in this world called Mariage Chorchier. At least Maria was engrossed. She would badger me to play this game every time she came. And of course I was too. However, when Maria started happily running something, and I just sat there for a while, I must admit that I sighed and looked up at the sky, making sure she didn't notice. It's fun to increase the numbers of our minions. They make things lively, so I do not tire of it. I may have tired of my minions alone, but even that problem goes away when I can interact with Maria as well. It takes two people to create a universe. Now that I have the second person, so I'm satisfied. I think I am satisfied, and yet one little part of me is not. It truly is a tiny part. After all, it's so much fun playing with Maria that time seems so it truly is a tiny part. After all, it's so much fun playing with Maria that time seems to fly on by. But even so, when I look up at the sky, during those short moments, I feel an empty feeling I can't describe. I know. My universe is not complete. My apologies to Maria, but she is not the second person I want to create a universe with. No matter how much I nurture my world with her, the roots of love in my heart leaves gaps. Four years have already passed since that day. He left saying he'd come for me riding a white horse, and I was the only one without a letter. He even said that he probably wouldn't be returning to Rokinjima. Is this love? I always believed that love was so much sweeter, so much more intoxicating. But now I don't know anymore. Though I long for him so much it's maddening. I can sometimes feel hatred underneath. However, even that hatred is wrapped in adoration. The roots of love have remained the corners of my heart all this time. At some point, I gave up hoping that Valor would return. However, the roots of love stayed right where they were. In other words, even four years later, I still believe. He will come back someday. A flower of my love is curled up and withered, as though against the winter cold. However, the root is still alive, and it is always always waiting for him to return, waiting for a chance to bloom beautifully again.
I'm grateful to Maria. Maria Shoshir has eased the earth. I'm grateful to Maria. Maria Shoshir has eased the burden on my heart so much. If we hadn't met like this, I may have withered away along with that root. Even this incomplete universe is necessary for me to remain alive now. I must live on until I can create my complete universe. Until that day, I will not be complete. Though I have a form and a name, no matter how deep my world grows, I will not be complete. I am not complete. Banjo? I accidentally muttered what I had been thinking. Maria stopped talking to Sakutaro. I regret my slip of the tongue had ruined this fun time. But there was a long silence before I could smooth it over. I laughed, but it probably sounded hollow. Maria, not knowing why my face had suddenly changed like this, looked taken aback. Though my minions will each deep in this world and their own existence is becoming full, I alone will never be complete. I know why I will not be complete. It's because you don't have enough magical power! Maria answered instantly. Beatrice lost her magical power as unable to regain the power she once had. That's how the story goes, so Maria's answer was correct. That's right. I may be incomplete because I have lost my magical power. In that case, if my power becomes complete and I revive in the truest sense, will my world become complete as well? Does that mean that the person I want to nourish a universe with will come back? If, as I claim, I was really able to control miracles at will in the past with my magic, then if I succeed in reviving, would that miracle definitely occur? If such a thing were possible, I'd want true magical power to use for my resurrection. That's right. It's because I do not possess enough magical power. Poor Banto! It must be pretty inconvenient with your magical power still weak! I want to get it back quickly. My old power. I guess you'll have to do that then! What do you mean by that? The Ceremony of Resurrection! The Ceremony of the Portrait's Epitaph! If you read that epitaph literally, it does sound like a witch's resurrection ceremony. To Maria who believes in witches, the epitaph must be a ceremony in itself. Unlike other family members, it seems she's not very interested in the location of the hidden gold. If the epitaph's riddle is solved, one might learn the location where Kinzo hid all the gold I once gave him. That's the gold you created with magic, right? Indeed. A crystallization of great magic I possessed in those days. In that case, if you get the gold back, your magical power will go back to normal! Perhaps. It will! Ah! It's gotta be a resurrection ceremony! I'll help, so let's solve it together! Then you'll revive! And when you do, you'll take me to your golden land! That's right. I did promise that I would take you to the golden land. You said that all wishes are granted there! There's no black witch there, just a nice mama! And I might even meet the papa I've never seen before! Of course, there won't be any school or homework or bullying friends and we can live happily ever after! Hey, Sakuto! Doesn't that sound fun? What are you? The epitaph of the portrait. So I must face the epitaph's riddle after all. If Kinzo's children struggled uselessly over it, how could a complete stranger like me solve it? If I did happen to solve it, that would surely be a miracle. Would doing that bring about another miracle? Return my miraculous power to me? This is taking a little bit longer than I anticipated, but we'll have to read another time. It's already been a while.
Any other things I have to be aware of? No. Good night. <laughs>